Cognitive load theory is an instructional theory derived from our knowledge of the evolutionary basis of human cognitive architecture and the instructional consequences that flow from that architecture. A key aspect of the theory is the relationship between long-term memory and working memory or short-term memory and how instructional materials interact with this cognitive system. Current studies of cognitive load theory are an essential ingredient in effective web-based instruction design. Cognitive load theorists focus upon the effect of the presentation of instructional material on the learning ability of the learner and on devising ways in which learning is made more efficient and effective. Cognitive load theory was formulated to take into account the limited duration and capacity of short-term memory when faced with novel information entering via sensory memory. Instructional designers need to be aware of the implications of design and pedagogy upon learners' ability to convert sensory memory into long-term memory and the strategies required to enhance rather than restrict the efficiency with which this is achieved within the learner's short-term memory. Understanding and tapping the rich potencies afforded by human cognitive architecture would result in a more purposeful instructional program embedded in multimedia mediated learning environments and avoid the pitfall of delivering e-learning materials that fail to impact upon a learner's cognitive development. Cognitive load theory provides a scaffolding structure for instructional designers of learning materials and especially for e-learning and multimedia enabled learning e-learning environments by providing an understanding of the way in which information is processed to enable active learning to take place. The work of Robert E. Mayer develops the cognitive theory of multimedia learning, building on a generative theory of learning wherein meaningful learning occurs when learners select relevant information from what is presented, organise the pieces of information into a coherent mental representation and integrate the newly constructed representation with others. Cognizant with the dual coding theory, the theory postulates that both visual and verbal information are processed differently and along different channels within the human mind, creating separate representations for information processed in each channel. Mayer proposes that learners have dual information processing pathways, visual and verbal. The purpose of learning might be defined as the acquisition of knowledge. Acquired knowledge retained in long-term memory and organised into hierarchical schemas becomes building blocks for further domain knowledge acquisition and streamlines the processing of new domain related material in working memory. Baddeley and Hitch in 1974 attempted to describe working memory or short term memory by postulating the model of a central executive. Originally modelled on a dual coding paradigm a visual and a verbal information channel. Baddeley added a third dimension in 2000, his episodic buffer, which he understood to be associated with the linking of information across domains and the integration of visual and verbal information with time sequencing. The episodic buffer allows short-term recall of stories and is assumed to have links to long-term memory and semantical meaning. The function of Baddeley's central executive is the integration of incoming sensory information and information retrieved from long-term memory. John Sweller, 2004, challenges Baddeley's central executive hypothesis. According to Sweller, failure to find empirical evidence for a central executive provides strong evidence against its, its existence and some of its attributes in the Baddeley model can be transferred to the subsystems instead. Sweller acknowledges that the complex processes involved in domain-specific knowledge do require central executive and postulates that this executive must be associated with learning behaviour that belongs in long-term memory. This central executive has no capacity, however, to deal with novel inf information and it is instruction that must act as a substitute central executive when the processing of novel information is required. 
without appropriate instructional procedures, element interactivity and working memory is random and impedes the learning process. Studies on the effect of cognitive load have concentrated on the relationship between information and instructional presentation of information and the human mind's capacity to process the information efficiently. Working memory is limited to processing small chunks of information at any one time. If domain related knowledge is already known and stored in long term memory, the processing load of working memory is lessened. If the information is novel and supplied without instructional organisation, then working memory may be stretched to capacity by random interactivity between elements. Instructors need to be aware, says Sweller, that without direct instructional guidance, learners have no choice but to adopt a random generation of possible alternatives followed by tests of effectiveness. It is important from an instructional perspective to note that the manner in which students process information varies according to the extent to which domain related information has already been recorded and organised in long term memory. Studies in cognitive load theory have shown that instructional designs that are very effective for novices may be quite ineffective for more ex expert learners and vice versa because the working memory characteristics of novices can barely be compared. It has been shown that novice learners who do not have or have limited schematic knowledge benefit from instructional material that is accompanied by scaffolding that manages the sequencing of information from simple to complex. For instance, extraneous cognitive load can be reduced by the use of worked examples and thus facilitate the integration of intrinsic load. In time, novices will build the schematic knowledge necessary to allow integration of domain-related knowledge without scaffolding, since they will have the benefit of learned knowledge available from schematically organised long-term memory. Cognitive load theory emphasises the need to integrate support for novice learners with the task environment. Otherwise, split attention effects increase extraneous cognitive load because learners have to integrate information mentally from the task environment with the given support. Integrated support for novice learners can be provided through the integration of visual and textual information in ways that reduce cognitive load. For example, a diagram may be accompanied by textual explanations. If the textual support is placed adjacent or otherwise apart from the diagram, that is, the source is split, cognitive load is increased, while textual information on or within the diagram reduces cognitive load and avoids split attention effects. 